between all three islands here where top esports won their successful fight but this time btr they want to control this place they want to rack up some kills and they are going on full offensive mode right now and i don't think they should be taking this fight yeah, I mean, you're inside the center of the circle. There's still 14 teams alive. So if they do go out early, again, the same narrative we mentioned, the fact that teams may be able to catch up with them with this game. And then four more still to be played. Cloud9 as well out in the distance. They still are in towards the center of the circle at the edge of the island of Camp Alpha, playing towards the river, which is smart because that way they have any way of rotations if the circle does go north and again but if it does go towards ruin which is south of the islands that's where things can get tricky yep at the same time as well the teams rotating from boot camp we saw btr took a huge flank coming into this uh, the southern section here passing towards this compound to go in and gatekeep these guys here and they heard i'm pretty sure they heard those gunshots coming from top east but because of that now they're being very cautious of their approach and now Zaxi up ahead here, they spot up movements, Ryzen won't knock off KK Skur and Top Esports, they lose one member potentially here as the nade's being dusted. Oh, this is one versus two, let's see what can happen there. And Zaxi and Ryzen gonna be leading the charge inside this building, but look at this from the side, it's gonna be one of the plays for Top Esports, he's hoping he gives hope then. Oh, gonna be taken down eventually though, Years as well tries to get into the action, but even Eagle goes down. And that's it, Top Esports out in the 14th. Yet another poor performance from them. And look at the life standings as well here, Terrence. 221 points for Bigger Toronto. They're going to be extending it as they got kill points versus the number two team. Yep, at the same time, Cloud9, they know these guys are BTR. They got a couple of third parties here coming prior. They got two knock, but I don't think they have the range here to actually finish them off. So BTR, they're going to take a slow pace, but C9 is going to be disengaged here as the circle is about to rotate right off the bat. He me the murder, hugging the shorelines of boot cam as they see long range shots, but Mantoy knocks on Perhar. Wow, my goodness. Look at that there. As they're gonna be charging into the water, trying to see if they can swim there onto the island and finish off the rest of the job, which they started up against Cloud9 as well. Something to highlight is the fact that we can see on the mini-map, there's actually gonna be a southern circle. Pinan maybe being a point which could be extremely pivotal here for these teams going forward. But yeah, Uneven has managed to get towards the scene of the crime, but not before shots are gonna be whizzing past his head as well. Mad Toy with a DMR at range connects a few shots, but it's just gonna be slight damage. But at the same time, you see Illumi the murder make smart use here. Mad Toy went on the full aggressive mode here to create a di diversion here for God on and Arthur to rotate in. It seems to be Illumi the murder. They want to take on the guy from C9. We saw a couple of suppressed fires coming from C, but I don't think Illumi knows it is a different team, but that is going to be a really tough watch here, but Amjon has I'll made it safe to shore. It seems to me they want to tackle from the north. The kings on the north are here from Southeast Asia, but will they be the victors? But remember as well for Illuminate, we saw poor performances in the last game from teams like Unique, teams like C9, which means they can have a better chance of rising those ranks up towards maybe fourth or fifth. And look at this again, C9 caught off guard. It just seems like they start off strong, and as the game continues, they just get worse and worse. What a spree right there from Goddard. The flanks, C9 was not expecting it here, but the flanks, the diversions from Illumini paid off, and they will secure themselves a couple of kills here. However, Perkisus, he was picked up rather than out here. Now he's gonna make a run for it, rotating towards the northern section of that bridge here. But Drax, he scouts out this movement. Will you do gang make a movement? That's the big thing here because they are still swimming across from the waters on the shoreline of the northern section of this bridge. So, now it's all down to Perkinsess and look at this. Oh, Sonny's heard him. He knows exactly where he is here towards the wall. They're going to go for the one versus one. The red dot up close is going to be effective. The question is though for how long as the white swing comes out. And so do C9. They go out as well in 13th. But at the same time here, the games are not over. You can see the team slowly clumping their way. The crowds are cheering for the hometown heroes here. You do gang wipes off Cloud9 to get himself a couple of placement points and kill points. But will they able to remain this high over here to get the chicken there? However, they are still outside of the circle. Yeah, it's a true point. They have to rotate down southwards, illuminate the murder are gonna be there to welcome them once they do that. And as well, Unicorn Gaming are on the other side, but they're gonna be walking into a completely free boot camp. 
And also towards the center of the circle, we see Mega versus Orange Esports. Here we have Unique as well towards the northern side at the bridge, which they currently are using as a blockade. And Mega Conqueror, they scout the guys from Orange Esports now. It seems to be they want to contest this compound, but at the same time, it's not a great compound to work with because it's a kind of like a turtle terrain here where the kind of in a choke, choke spot and fire. He wants to go for the save, but as soon as they spot out movements for Mega Conqueror, they're going to go for the push. However, Unique here, oh. scout the guys from Team Queso, Ayala will get shot off. Team Queso had a poor performance in that last game. They cannot afford to have it yet again because they were almost locked in in third. Old oh boy, with a good spray there across from range. But look at this, though. Oh. D2E he wants to make them DEAD instead. Catches out Yasho, spots out his head. Not going to pull the trigger as of yet. He knows that Team Queso are going to be shot at as well. Maybe going to wait for them to finish off the job versus Team Queso and then make their move. This is super risky coming from RRQ Athena, but and yet it's so smart from D2E. Because of the costume of his clothes here, he kind of kind of camouflages himself between the bridges. So hopefully he's not going to be able for any teams to spot him out. But if he pays it perfectly, he's going to punish the guys coming in from Unique. Yeah, I'm trying to see if he can spot out where the fishes are currently swimming. And he spots out Mystic and he spots out Axel. Oh, they're trying to swim underwater, but they only have a limited amount of breath before eventually they will be taking systemic damage. And here it is, Marco on the surface, but Kitsune actually is going to fall back. Maybe they don't go for this one, but no, it's going to be all point. Finishes off the job, or the at least knockdown onto Mystic. The smoke's coming out as well from his teammates, hoping that he can maybe stay alive. Oh, this is so risky, but at the same time, because they have this bike here, they're going to close the gap here to try and finish them off. Root is going to suppress the fire here as they make way for the rest of the team to try and push in towards the next phase of the circle. But they didn't really know. D2E is on top of the bridge. Oh, this could be perfect. There's two players here, three players actually. You can wait for the car to go past. Spots out Roy with his own. Goes with the red dot spray. He gets it. There's two more than thinking, what the hell? Where the hell is he? He even has time to maybe reload it. All Roy's thinking, what the hell is going on? He's going to fall down as well. Take a little bit of damage, but that's fine because he's done so much damage to Unique here. Two more players eliminated as i believe that was one more player yeah that was kitsune who just jumped off this is horrific for unique it's a disaster for the guys in unique what a play coming from d 2 e they get not one but two d e a d my friend but at the same time the rest of the teams are still here the circle pushing those guys on ruins here you can see all rejection gaming they're pushing from the southern section here but little did you know beside them is the guys from mega conquer and also orange esports i'm pretty sure they heard the gunshots coming from mega but they are very cautious in their approach right now they have two kills they want to secure some points here to get in towards the top five position here but will be the victors here mega conquer strong performance coming from preliminary stages now they are playing super safe they've lost the scout rod yet and i'm worried for the guys from mega conquer now yeah they played aggressive in that last game and it really did not pay off for them so now they're taking more of a passive tone into game two of today but i say today of the rest of the year essentially before we go into 2020 lapis is still alive we've already seen two kills as well against Sol. that was in the first five minutes of the match so far we did reiterate that point i think this is the highlight okay. Reel? yeah okay which uh did show us two kills and then obviously kitsune jumped down I, I, I was about to jump on my pants again because I thought it was going to be another team jump, there. But jump, jump in your pants. Jump out of my pants. But oh, yeah. okay, sorry. PG-13, <laughs> Okay, anyways, uh, back into this game here, we can see um, Mega Conqueror. He does stone, spots out a couple of glimmers. I think he knows he saw Lapis. Okay, he didn't see it here, but Lapis, his legs were slightly showing here. But if he pushes any more here, Mega Conquer is going to spot him out and they are going to reposition and take this fight. However, the team that we've been talking about here from day one, Unicorn Gaming, they had strong performance coming from Hulk. They fell a little bit short in the map of Fairy Hill and this time in the map of Sano, they're going to be joining the fight from the Eastern Islands. See the fans were rallying behind their local team who, as of today and yesterday, haven't been able to match their performance from day one and that was a similar story as well for teams like illuminate yeah at the same time here drags they got one kill but this time 
the circle, the third phase of circle is going to be completely closed. And once the fourth phase comes in, you do gang, they're forced to fight a lot of teams here. I'm worried for the hometown heroes here because if you think about it, Drax only has a level one helmet. A couple shots in the head is pretty much down for Kamen. They have to be very careful about the next approach as they are hugging the short, the lines of the circle. But fortunately for them, they are very, very close. But let's take a look at circle S. Oh, wow. oh. Yeah, this is going to be quite a chaotic ending. I mean, of course, it's Sandhawk. Would you expect anything less than that? But one, two, three, four, five teams towards the southern side outside of the circle. Mega are at the edge of the new circles. This is very important, this gunfight here for all rejection gaming. If they can take down Mega, they're going to have a compound inside the circle. Yeah, and not to mention as well, Bigatron, Red Aliens, they are inside the circle. They're starting their zone, everyone else here. And if they play the right timings right, they're going to be getting a lot of kills. But it seems to me BTR, they're playing super defensive. However, Pods starts out. Crazy Gory. Yeah, Crazy Gory trying to go for some scouting out information plays. The issue is though, Pons was waiting for it here with the ACOG scope. And with that, one more player going to be downed here by All Rejection Gaming. But they're still not going to be giving up just yet. They're actually still slowly slithering ever so closer. And now they know where Pons and a few of the players are from Mega. They may actually try and set up an execution here with grenades. Maybe if they can pin them correctly as they're trying to work out what the best angle of approach here is in this situation. They have to be quick here coming from Lapis here. He needs to toss the nade on towards the guys from Mega Conqueror because on the sides, Team Soul is also rotating in. But if they heard a gunshot here, they are going to go join in fight. But the nades will connect. Stone gets to get up. Here comes the spray from Lapis. It's all down to Pons. He's the last player here standing for Mega. Trying to revive on that 24 as fast as he can. But look at this though. All Rejection Gaming coming in as fast as they can. They realize how vulnerable Mega are. It seems like the revival will come through though. So Mega 24 is going to stand on his feet. Pons comes out as well. Goes into the open. Spots up more of the players. Going to be coming from the side as well. Catches up. Mayo, he's down. Look at the HP as well. As they're so low. They get the kill conversion as well. Just extra points here for Mega. As Pons trying to get inside this vehicle. Inside this compound even. He gets another kill here with the Uzi. Okay. Oh, Uva. Maybe it's going to be over for all rejection gaming. As from the side again, it's the up 10. What HP? Can, can all like 24 finishes off though? He goes with the reload of the Uzi and down he goes. That's going to be all rejection gaming out in 12. Mega keep control towards the edge of the circle. Oh, that would have been a clutch here coming from Pons, but the level 3 helmet <laughs> at the best here saves his life from Uber, and because of that, he was able to win that fight against Pons with one HP. However, it's still a win for Mega Conqueror. They lose two members in the process, but still, it's, they are still in the game. 11 teams, 35 alive, are RQ Athena, the team that we've been hyping up from day one all the way to day has not shown their performance today. They are stepping up. They got seven kills in game one today. Now, two kills. They are still up and running here. Will they be able to gatekeep the record? Because they are going to be playing from the west side of Sony. Yeah, we may see to slow down for a moment. Ooh, though, Kasia from Unique does go for one for one trade as he's headshotted by Senior. Oh, it's in the open. There's only a road here as well that splits off this new circle. So, who is this going to fade here, Terrence? This is really cool. He's going to be favoring BTR because they have a compound on the southeast corner which has so much vision on all the rest of the teams here. However, you do gang, you see they got shot from the guys from BTR. They have so much vision and because of that, they're in some tough spot. But you hear gunshots coming in. Coco is panicking his way through. You can see he's trying to gatekeep the guys from you do gang as the rest of the teams try to make way into the circle. But 10 seconds left. The circle is going to be closing in here. They do the murder. They hold this gunshot. They want a piece of them. This zone gonna be constricting these teams like a python. Entity, oh no, he's getting snaked here from the side. Attack, nearly going down, does survive though. Gets towards the edge, but look at this though. Another team enters the fray. D2E gonna be finishing off the job as well as Attack is now down. A man and Jonathan in the open, they have to rotate, but RRQ surely have the vantage point here to finish off what they've started. No. Jonathan, gonna get behind the rock, but as you said, the zone is not coming in, so they are on a Very smart approach coming from RRQ. They got one knock from Entity, immediate repositions here to gatekeep this guys, but at the same time, they have to check the vicinity by Mega Conqueror. We'll finish off in 10 plays, but here comes Entity. Yeah, here it comes. Not really in favor of Entity, though. Here it all comes for RRQ. As inside the zone, the shot's gonna be going up against Jonathan, as he's gonna be knocked down for now. Two more players as well inside. 
the circle. D2E actually be falling back here immediately as fast as he can. Attack as well, taken down by the grenade. A man as well, going for the four second here. I don't think he's going to make this one. Terrence, this could be it here for Entity. Oh, he survives just for a moment. Oh, takes out one more player as well. Oh, RQ, so maybe there's a chance here, but Senior has to get so much done early as well here from oh, RQ. But even Senior gets taken down by a man. Whoa. Okay, one player remains there. One player remains, Ernie remains still. Oh no, for E, for RRQ, as more players, more teams are taken out, down to seven. Yep, Unicorn Gaming, they were struggling their way through, they got taken out, but RRQ, they made a little bit of mistakes, gets punished from Ma Aman, Entity Gaming, with the Clutch here, down to the six teams. So, Clutch Gun is down, Mortal is still alive, he wants to pick him up, but here comes Nades coming from Illuminate the Murder. They're gonna be making a raid, but unfortunately, it doesn't connect, but oh! He's gonna be a good one, no, it's gonna be fine, it's gonna be fine. Fine for now, as Soul as well, they are inside the center of the circle, to the left of our screens. I know there's so much action going on, Forget that for now. Oh, another player as well gone for Seoul. RRQ senior dies in the zone. I think he may have been the last player. Actually, no, there's one player still remaining for RRQ. There's one more that can be revised, maybe two. Martin as well here from Illuminate the Murder, making this so awkward for RRQ to even rotate in. So, yeah, as I said before, there's only one player standing. That's Ernie from RRQ. The nades from Mordo comes in, connects on Martin, and because of that, Illuminate the Murder, they are backing out for a little bit here. They want to reset and resurrect the fight, but RRQ will finish off in sixth place, but now down to the top by BTR joining the action finally from the southeast action here. They heard gunshots coming from northwest. They heard gunshots coming from orange esports. And you can see Microboy setting his eyes here. He saw off off. And he gonna Oh, it seems likely. A few more shots and that would have done it. Microboy making some big macro plays as BTR currently inside the center of the circle. They've got six kills, four players alive. Illuminate the murder do have nine kills and four players alive as well. So they're gonna be Contestants here in this game. That grenade goes all the way over to Orange Esports though, but it doesn't quite connect the damage required to finish off the remaining players from Orange Esports. Oh, look at this though, Mortal, the uh -oh. remaining player here for Soul. It seems like a game of cat and mouse, and that grenade as well could do shrapnel damage. He's gonna throw out a grenade, but be caught off guard by it seems. Got on! Comes from the corner, losing the draw though immediately to Soul. Mortal trying to finish off the kill as well. Get some more kill points for his team in this squad. Play ring around the Rosies, around the rock, but he's caught off guard. And that's gonna be it. Mantoy takes him down, Solar out in fourth. Immediately now we're down to three. Down to the three indeed. The Southeast Asia teams are back. BTR, Illuminate the Murder, and Orange Esports. They are going to be going head to head here. But the circle is going to be favoring the guys in the, the not of this world here because they are from you, I don't know, from Mars maybe, but still, at the same time, Illuminate has the high ground and they are gonna be taking this fight to BTR now. The zone is coming in, it's doing so much damage here as we are into phase seven. Orange Esports though coming towards the top of the hill, they're trying to fight off Illuminate the murder here, but actually, ironically, they're the ones being murdered. This fire goes down, McBoy as well, Microboy doing all the damage, all the plays, and look how stacked up Illuminate are. They may go down immediately here, it's Ryzen gets involved, it's now going to be Orange Esports up against the top dog, Bigatron, trying to make it more, rise towards the top, and that's going to be it here, yet another chicken dinner, $5,000 added again, oh, it's just so easy for them, 16 years old, 16 years old, 17 and 18, how are they so proposed? They're insane here, coming from Bigatron, Red Alien, look at the clinical finish, the knees from Luxy connecting on Illuminate the Murderer takes down two, and because of that, they were so confident going for the wrap route, and that is how you play the circle. When we talked about who's favoring the most, BTR had the compound to work with. They had so much information. 